Welcome back to what I did in lab yesterday because I forgot to make this yesterday when I actually did my lab. Where I tell you guys what I did in my biochem lab. So yesterday was the first week of our plant transformation lab. So transformation is basically the practice of putting genes from one or organism into a new organism. And this week we are using agrobacteria to transform carrots. So first off we had to prepare our agrobacterium culture, which had been cooking overnight for a couple days. We just had to add a couple things to it and leave it in the incubator for a while in order to just get fully prepared to do the transformation. Then we had to prepare our carrot samples. Basically what we did, we just chopped them up and sterilized them using the same method that I talked about last week, soaking them in bleach, rinsing them, etc, etc. So after the bacteria were done cooking and the carrots were still sterilizing, we had to then concentrate the bacterial cells, meaning taking a bunch of the bacteria from the large culture, putting them in some centrifuge tubes, spinning them for a while to collect all the bacterial cells at the bottom, then we discarded the media that was left over that didn't have any bacteria in it, added new media from the original culture, spun it so all the cells were concentrated, rinse and repeat a couple times so we got a solid amount of bacteria in one microcentrifuge tube. Then we basically added some water to resuspend the bacterial cells so we had a good liquid culture of highly concentrated bacteria cells. Now, agrobacteria is a plant pathogen, so it's harmless to humans, but it does infect plants and it can cause things like tumors occasionally in the plants. This is due to it inserting its genes into the plant cells. We use that to genetically modify plant cells, such as what we're doing in this lab. So what we have is just a reporter gene that we're inserting into the carrots. A reporter gene doesn't really have any functional aspects other than showing that the transformation was successful. In our case, we're using the Gus gene, so we had a Gus positive culture and a Gus negative culture. The positive culture has the Gus gene in the bacteria, while the negative doesn't. So after the bacteria was all concentrated and the carrots were all sterilized, we had to plate them. So basically what we did, we got a piece of filter paper with some sterilized water on it just to keep the carrots moist. Then we put five or six carrot slices in each container after removing all of the dead tissue that was killed by the bleach. After the carrot cells were plated, we added the bacteria using the Gus positive and the Gus negative. Basically what we did, we just got our little pipette, put a drop of the bacteria on the carrot plate samples, two dishes for positive, two dishes for negative, and then spread them around with a sterile bacteria loop. Once all the bacteria were on the carrots, then we just had to leave them cook for a week and I will be back next week with the updates about that. But what should happen is the bacteria will start to infect the carrot slices. This is for both the Gus positive and the Gus negative. They will insert their genes into the carrot cells. Now for the Gus negative, they're the negative control, so there shouldn't be any visible differences with the carrot. Even though that the bacteria are inserting their genes into it, there won't be any visible things. However, with the Gus positive, they have the Gus reporter gene, and what the Gus reporter gene does is it turns the carrots blue. So coming back next week, if the transformation was successful, the Gus negative carrot dishes will be bright orange like that, but the Gus positive dishes should have blue in them if the genes were transferred over successfully. And I was told by a couple different people that it is a bad idea to eat the transgenic carrot even though nothing would probably happen because the bleach is all washed away and the bacteria is harmless to humans and the Gus reporter gene is harmless to humans. Despite all that, I was told that it's probably not a good idea to eat the transgenic carrots even though I do very much want to see what will happen even if that something is probably nothing. But either way, I will be back next week with the results of this lab to see whether or not my carrots turned blue.